Hey, um, my phone died on me and I thought it was plugged up, but it was in the wrong extension cord. So shit, it's completely dead. Um, I had ended, well, it ended where I was talking about how my mom. I'm reading this text. My mother, um, she never really, to me, stepped up into her womanhood when she was raising the kids. Um she was taught that the woman shouldn't really do a lot of talking in the house so i really never seen my mother really talk much until my father left the home once my father left the home she didn't know how to run a household so we was just scattered my brothers and sisters we just was scattered and then when she finally started voicing her opinion it was just straight insults and narcissism and disrespect no love no 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 guidance nothing it was just mayhem and a lot of times this is what happens with women that are not equipped they just let the children run amok in the house there's no there's no role models i'm not saying like they say well if the man is out the home there's a higher chance of those type of dysfunctions that is true somewhat but let's say the father's still involved if he's not actually in the home but he's involved you could still have a good dynamic because all three of my kids they pretty good my first daughter she never really got to grow up with a dad because he passed away but she had a support system right she made a lot of mistakes my oldest you know what i'm saying she had her own children at a young age not really she wasn't wild she had her first child i think at 19 she wasn't wild, but she was a good girl, but she made mistakes. But she wasn't like out here in the streets, you know, gang banging or slutting it up with men. She was still trying to go to school and do what she needed to do, but she got caught up. However, my other two kids, they, they're pretty good too. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're not street kids. They're very well-spoken. They don't curse. You know what I'm saying? So, I got divorced when they were little. So, it's not like a woman can't raise her kids. It should be two family. It should be. That is a better way for it to be a better dynamic. But there's a lot of other details that go along with that dynamic. Because you could be two family and one is toxic, <laughs> abusive, now this wants to die. Let me see if I can put this other one on. It's like nothing wants to allow me to make a video. It's the first time I'm really getting passionate in a while. And now this thing says it's going to die. So, okay, let's see. Hopefully it doesn't shut off when I put this thing. This phone is so sensitive. Um, it's better to have two healthy parents. That's what they fail to put in that nuclear situation. It's better to have two healthy parents. Because statistics show if the parents is toxic, the kids is going to be toxic. Um, if one parent is toxic... The toxic parent needs to be less dominant than the non-toxic parent. So if the healthy parent is more dominant in the situation, then it may drown out the toxic parent and the kids may still have a, a decent chance of a good upbringing. But if the toxic parent is more dominant and then the healthy parent is more maybe like quiet and submissive and let the toxic parent run amok, them kids are going to have some issues. So, it is better for one parent to be healthy than two unhealthy parents or one healthy parent than one toxic, one healthy, but the toxic is more dominant. You have a better chance at just having a healthy parent versus a healthy and a toxic parent together. It's better you let that toxic parent go, let them go get their life together, and then come back bringing a fresh start. Now, does that mean you should not let the toxic parent see the child? Not necessarily. It depends on how toxic. 
if it's to the point where it's dysfunctional parenting like abuse or neglect cut that motherfucker off whether it's a woman or female if you're the father and the woman is the toxic one you may need to go to court and get your rights like full custody or whatever but a lot of people don't they, they, they lazy they don't want to go to court they, they just want to complain oh she's a bitch oh he's an asshole okay what are you doing about it and then when the kid come out looking crazy running amok out here shooting up buildings joining gangs don't be surprised that's the outcome of bad parenting now it's not always from bad parenting per se it is somewhat societal as well it's the culture so you can be a good parent and then your child go on the, on the social media <coughs> and join a cult or join a gang and then they do the, the research on the family dynamics and they're like man he came from such a good home why was he joining these gangs or cults because it was probably um kind of fun to him or her it looked fun it looked fun to be promiscuous or join a gang and brandish a gun online. So this is part of being stupid. So that's something that it may, it may happen. But then, as the Bible said, train a child the way you want them and eventually it'll kick in and they'll follow that way. So they may go through a phase of being stupid and then when they finally realize, man, what the hell am I doing? I come from a good home. Why am I here with these knuckleheads? when my mom and dad actually love me. You know what I'm saying? So that happens. So you just you just gotta, but you just can't be the reason why that child is going down the path of hell. Because at the end of the day, you gotta answer for that shit. So when I look back at how my mom and dad raised me, I would say both of them was crazy, but my father still put a footprint in my path. He still allowed me to see certain shit that stayed with me up to today he still gave me some level of confidence about how i should look at life and certain things that my mother never equipped me with and i never understood how she was such a brilliant smart woman this woman is fucking smart okay she went to college for accounting and she just she's fucking smart she knows the law like the back of her hand but yet she never taught none of her kids none of that shit and this is what I mean. If women don't step up, you got to, not in, not in a negative way. I don't mean go out here and cursing people out and just showing off and acting stupid. I'm not talking about that kind of that kind of speaking up because people are tired of that too. If you're gonna speak up, have something something useful to say, right? You know, you go on these um, podcasts now, everybody gossiping, everybody talking shit. Nobody's saying nothing that's going to help society. Not saying everybody. I'm just, y'all understand what I'm trying to say, right? Majority of the culture is how stupid can you sound? What stupid gossip are you talking about today? And instead of the women using this freedom that we're finally getting a little bit of leadway, just a little bit in society, you want to take this little bit of leadway and show your ass. Or talk shit. Or join movements against men. Who gives a fuck about that? This is not the time to shine a light on men. This is a time to shine a light on yourself. What are you good at? What are you capable of doing? What are you capable of bringing to the table in society? Other than, I'm going to get my nails done. Oh, this is soft girl life. I'm going to go get my massage. I'm going to get this. It's just like, what? Is this what we fought for all these centuries to finally have a voice to say, I need to get my acrylics done. Oh, I need my lace front. Oh, I need my Botox. Oh, I got fine lines. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got to get these fine lines. And you see, ladies, this is what we're not going to do. We're not going to do this because we're not going to get a husband. We need to get this gone. You see these crow's feet? Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. This, I, I'm so sick of it. I'm so effing sick of it. I would like to turn on a podcast and hear a woman spitting knowledge. That's what I miss. That's the era that I came from. 
And I'm not saying none of them do. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I just would like to see the majority of it. Not twerking your ass somewhere or getting D put up in you. Or talking about how much you hate D. We get it. We get it. You don't like dingling. Okay. But what are you doing to bring betterment to society? Other than hating the man. We get it. They fucked up. We get it. Okay. But what are you doing? What are you doing? To uplift this situation. This horrible situation that we're stuck in. We're all stuck in this together. Maybe if the man hear what you got to say, he might change and be like, you know what? I've been hearing a lot of negative bullshit, but these women starting to make some goddamn sense. Let, let me let me start to change some of the shit that I got going on. But if as soon as he turn on the TV, all he's seen is more Botox ass and, and gossip and women tearing each other down, why would he respect that? Why would he sit there and give a fuck what you got to say at this point? It's just like, it's just common sense. It's common freaking sense. And then you want to go on their podcast and bum rush their podcast. You better respect the woman. You better respect us. Okay, give him something to respect. And then when you got a, a, a person, a female gender speaking sense, they want to shut that person up. They want to get them disbarred or get their channel dismembered. I mean, dismantled. But then when you got the other chick over there, FD, F men. It's us. It's all about us. It's all about us. Okay, we get it. So now that it's all about us, what are we doing different? What are we doing less toxic? You want to say, oh, how this man is this and this and this. Okay, are you doing anything in opposition to what he stands for? But no, you get on there and you're worse. You're worse. You're unaliving each other. You're bragging about the little bit that you accomplished instead of helping the next sister out. Nobody can't ask you where you bought your little outfit from without you talking about somebody hating on you. Everybody a goddamn hater. Nobody can't check you and say, hey, sis, you know, the way you was talking to your child online or the way, I, you know, I saw you in the subway screaming at your baby. That's not cool, sis. Mind your fucking business, bitch. That's what we're dealing with. Pure ignorance. Now, this is not all women. This is not all women. The women that are not so ignorant, they're docile. We're not hearing enough of those women. They're docile in the corner, either serving their man, serving their children, serving everybody, but not telling people, hey, listen, we need to bring change to this community. We need to be, tra we need to be doing something different. Being neutral don't help either. No one's saying you got to create a channel. I'm not saying that. It's not about getting on social media. But if you have the opportunity to bring about change, you should use whatever opportunity that is presented to yourself, whether it's at your job, start a program. If you work for a nonprofit organization, start a woman's movement. It could be real small. Something as small that you wouldn't even think about can grow big. Like I said, right now, I can't really focus a lot on YouTube because of my school. It's getting harder and harder, but I will be finishing school. And like I was saying, I want to start my memberships where people can come together and we voice our opinions, right? But the bigger scope of this was what I was talking about was actually starting an online website, a nonprofit organization to better society. And it will have to start with women and children. How I'm going to do it? I don't know yet. I just know I got, I, that's what I'm planning to do. 
I'm going to be praying about it, learning, researching, figuring out how to get it popping. But once I get it popping, I want it to grow past me. This is not just about me starting a business and wanting to say, I'm an LLC. That's not what I'm about. Money don't really, I'm not all about money. I'm not all about fame and fortune. I'm about progress, peace, and equilibrium. If I could write down one thing that I really want out of life before I ever left this planet, it would be peace. Peace amongst the world. Just just to be able to go outside and say, ah. <laughs> is that even humanly possible in this era? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because pre-pandemic, it felt like we was getting ready to get somewhere in life, you know. I don't know, you know, Obama came with his little good old speech, you know, his little good old massa massa speech, and people was falling for it, right? We all almost thought it was going to be peachy creamy. And then now I think back, and I realize we've stepped into another portal, and I can't even remember anything pre-pandemic. I can't. I don't remember what life was like. All I remember was some some chaos going on. And the last thing I remember was that dude that got choked out. Uh, Eric Garner. Not Eric Garner. Um, George Floyd. After that, I don't... I, it's like we stepped into another matrix. Now we're in the, tech, we're in the technological, technological matrix. We stepped in 5G. And everything just started spinning out of control now. So everything is just, I, 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 I don't even know. Like you blink and it's tomorrow. You blink and it's a month from now. It is, it, things are different. We're in a different portal right now. So whatever it used to be, it ain't no more. Y'all gonna have to get with the times. <laughs> We're evolving differently now. Did y'all notice people not having kids like they used to? We're evolving differently. Y'all got to get out of that old way of thinking. It's not working. You got people literally got robots now raising their kids. They'll never be home. Nobody wants to be home no more. And if they are home, it's to bring groceries and take out. The rich are getting richer and they're enjoying life. They're traveling. They're never home. The kids don't see them. And the poor people, they're in the house, miserable, and they're going to work, working like a slave, nine, nine, ten hours, and they're coming home, going straight to bed. And that is their life. No one's enjoying life like they used to. So all that, you should stay home and be a family a family of what a family of what get this shit together first before bringing more babies into this chaos first the genders got to get along so you're gonna bring a baby and you don't even like men and you don't even like women you don't even like each other how are you gonna bring a baby into the world you don't even like each other you don't even respect what a woman stands for. You don't respect what a man stands for. How can those two mix if they don't even get along? A child does not need to be experiencing that. You think passing a law to stop abortion is going to change the dynamics of what's happening with the gender toxicity? No, it's not. Trump can pass as many laws as he wants. It's not going to change what's going to happen. And not only that, when women get to the point where they're going to do something, they're going to do it anyway. They're going to find some dude in Mexico that will botch them up and, and snatch the trigger warning. They're going to get that abortion done one way or the other. It's not going to change nothing. Even if they don't do abortion, if they allow abortion. It, it doesn't change anything, whether the abortion law is here or not. This economy is fucked from the root 
of the fucking core. The ideologies, the culture, the dynamics, the power dynamics, all of it is out of whack. The government, the politics, everything, everything. And if we don't start gutting it out on a level of anarchy, it's never going to change. No one is strong enough, wise enough, and un like, it's too many lazy people. I'm not saying you got to go out there and start a war, but if you don't want to start governing yourself, then don't get mad at the politicians when they, when they, when they, when they do the shit, they the toxic shit that they do. Soon they're going to probably start passing laws. One baby per household. And in all actuality, one household really shouldn't be having more than two children in this, in this day and age. Because some child, if you have five and six children, somebody's going to get neglected in that batch and going to come out crazy. Because they're going to feel like you're putting more attention on the other sibling than this one and it's never going to be even. And if your wife is working, you're working, you ain't got money for a nanny and you having five and six kids, it's going to be some issues. I'm sorry. Now you got to spend more money after the kids get older, putting them in therapy to try to figure out why they're suffering from depression, why they feel abandoned. And you're like, well, how did you feel abandoned and I never left the home? It's because they didn't get the love like the other sibling. All of these things need to be addressed before we start saying working on a nuclear family. All these things need to be addressed first. Women need to have a place in society before we start pumping out more babies. Because we're just bringing more dysfunctional children into this economy. It's, it's not working. We got to get back to loving one another. When I say get back, I don't even know. If, when, when did that really ever really exist, right? So... We got to get to that point where we genuinely like being around one another. Is that possible? I don't know. I'm just telling you what it should be. What it is is not what it is now. It's just That's just what it should be. You got... And this is no shade against same sex, right? But you got same-sex relations rising now because of the dynamics of toxicity in the opposite genders. But the same-sex relationships are having the same problem. The same problem. Because it all goes back to you not recognizing your worth, not loving yourself, and thinking that running to another gender is going to solve your problems. First, fix you before you start spreading yourself to somebody else fix you do what it takes to restructure regain and regroup whatever you lost or whatever you're trying to gain focus on that first what are you in a rush for what are you in a rush to go made up with somebody for why oh my biological clock is ticking okay so your biological clock is going to determine when you should be ready? No. Because your biological clock might be ticking, but your mental is all the way fucked. So now you're bringing another baby in the world because your biological clock ticking, but your mental is all screwed up. What sense that make? What sense that make? You rush into lose your virginity to some creep that won't even stick it out with you if there was something wrong with your womb. You're rushing to go have a baby to find out something's wrong with your womb. You might not be able to bring it full term. It's like all these dynamics you got to think. You got to think about. So if that's your only worth, what happens when that don't work? You just crawl in the corner and die now? No. You got to get to the core of the problem. The core of the problem is your worth. You ain't got nothing to do with negative energy or dynamics. It's you. 
It all goes back to you. Because when all the shit hits the fan, when the BBLs don't work, when your womb betrays you, when your man betrays you, when your kids betray you, it all goes back to you. You have to come back and deal with yourself. I'm going to give you a quick story and then I'm going to get off. When I was in my early 20s, I had my first child at 17, right? My mother made me raising her a living hell because I needed my mother. I didn't have anybody. So when my daughter turned about maybe eight, I started craving to have another baby because my daughter would spend a lot of time with my mom back and forth and she liked being at my mom's house because there was a whole bunch of kids there. What, you hungry? My cat's so greedy. Ari, can you feed the cat? So, she used to like going over there to spend time with the kids. So my mom would be like, why don't you just let her stay for the school year because she's, you know, happy playing around with the kids over here or whatever. So, I would say back and forth within the, the eight years of raising her, I spent a lot of time by myself. You know, like when she wasn't there for the school year, it was just me going to work, coming home. Sometimes I'll go to parties. But I felt really, 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 really lonely, alone. This is in my early 20s like 19 20 this is before i had my other two kids and i kept saying maybe if i have another baby i won't feel so worthless and i had started college and everything and it was like nothing none of the things that i was doing was bringing me was filling that void i went to church i got baptized it's back when i was christian I was baptized. It was like I was trying everything. I was seeking God. I was going to parties. Anything I could do to fill the void. I didn't know that I was an abused child. I didn't know I had never faced my trauma. I didn't know that I had no self-worth. I didn't know none of that stuff. No one taught me that stuff. I experienced it and now I can fully tell you guys how you overcome it the process it may take. It took me a lot longer because I didn't have anybody explaining that shit to me. You see what I'm saying? So I would go to work and I would see older women looking beautiful, smiling, looking accomplished. And I thought, oh, so you gotta have a husband, be accomplished and have babies. And that's what it takes to be a woman. Cause this is all I seen, this is all I could emulate. I didn't understand what inner core work looked like so i was like i just gotta have a baby and i'll be happy again right so i'm looking at babies people holding babies and i'm like oh the baby's so cute can i hold your baby having baby fever up the ass biological clock ticking all that bullshit so by the time i turn when did i have my first child i think 26 i mean my second child i think 20 wait it was 10 years later so 17 yeah, by 26, I had my second child and got pregnant. So I got pregnant and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy. You know, everybody's looking at me like, oh, she's pregnant. You know how people give you the attention. They touching on the belly. Child, when my son was born, me and my kid's father had got married um, a little bit before he was born. And um, I went into a deep, deep, dark, dark depression like suicidal and I couldn't fight that feeling my son would be crying crying in the crib and I'd be rocking myself like this oh my god would he shut the fuck up like in my mind like like thoughts was going through my mind like if this little boy like no one would be home with me the, the kid's father at work my other daughter with the mom the first daughter and it's just me and this little baby just screaming and he used to breastfeed i mean full full breastfeeding like every meal not skipping a meal sucking on me i was drained no vitamins i wasn't taking prenatals because it used to give me constipation i was skinny i was losing weight i didn't want to eat a lot i was tired 
and angry. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was angry. I just knew I was fucking tired. But even when I used to get breaks, I used to get little breaks here and there where his mom, which was my ex-mother-in-law, she would come over. She would take the baby off my hands for a couple hours. It was rage and anger in me. And I didn't know at that time why. But I realized over time it was because I, I sold myself a lie. I thought that by bringing more babies, I would discover my worth. And when I seen that it wasn't so, I wanted out. I wanted out. So two years later, me and my kid's um, father was having problems. We wasn't getting along. And it was partially because of my depression and then partially because I wanted more for myself. I wanted to work because when he met me, I was um, starting college and I had all these aspirations for myself and then I got pregnant. So it was either stay home, stop school. So I basically abruptly stopped everything that I was accomplishing to become a full-term mom. And at first I was happy about that choice but then I started regretting it. So when my, my third child, this is the last child, my daughter, two years later, two and a half years later, I'm pregnant again. And I was considering divorcing him because I was like, I made a fucking mistake. This is, this is not the life I wanted, right? At first, this is, you gotta remember, I'm going through postpartum. I'm also miserable. I'm still feeling lonely. Um... I had loved him a lot, <coughs> but, <coughs> excuse me, we were both too young to understand responsibility as far as that dynamic. And maybe I'll touch on that another day about me and him, like how, how it went. But there was a lot of insecurities in me that I wasn't um, aware of until I got married. Um... It was just so many things, so many mental and spiritual warfare that I went to. I had converted to Islam. Um, even covering up, wearing all the garb. I used to wear the long dresses. Um, I became a part of a community. We went to the masjid. It was nice for a while, but then it became oppressive. It's like I felt constraint like I didn't know who I was I was like who is this person it was like I just chameleon myself to fit the Nancy Drew life to fit the white picket fence life but it didn't feel real to me it didn't feel like I really understood me I was just serving and serving and serving and serving every day I woke up from the from the time I woke up in the morning to the time I went to bed I was constantly just a servant a servant to my household and then I started hating him my ex because he wasn't grateful for anything I did it was like you're supposed to do that you're a woman that's what you're supposed to do and I hated that I gave up my life brought babies into the world instead of going back to school and he didn't want to do nothing with his life. He would just have a base. I think he was working at Walmart at the time. And he would just come home and smoke weed and just scratch his balls. While I'm over here trying to think about how I'm going to go to law school. Because back then I wanted to be a lawyer. So I had all these dreams and aspirations. And I wanted him to be. Like I wanted to see that through him. And when I seen he didn't have no goals and aspirations. It made me more depressed. Because I was like, you supposed to be holding it down. I'm having a baby. You should be out there getting a banging ass job. You got nothing but time on your hands. You this all you're gonna do is walk at Walmart, and then you 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 sitting here getting high. Why not get a second job? Why not go back to school? I used to be on his ass, and he hated that about me. He was like. Dang, you always want a nigga that you can't have. You want more than what you what you got. And I'm like, because life is leaving. And we have nothing to show for it. These kids have nothing. No education. They're going to look at us as bombs. <laughs> That's what I used to say. And it came to fruition. It 
came to fruition. My kids started getting older and it was like, yo, dad is mad lazy. And we're not even going to get on that right now. This is what I'm saying. He's a good dude. Overall, he's a decent person. He's not a bad person. It's just that I was so desperate for this happy home that I didn't take time to vet the relationship. And like when you're that young, you don't know what a man is going to be. You don't know if he has the aspirations. You don't know if he's a go-getter like that because he's still young. So he's still developing. I didn't know he was going to stay like that the whole marriage. He didn't grow. So when I'm over here going to school, busting my ass, I was the strong one and I hated that. I'm like, why am I the only fucking strong one? Why am I the only one thinking of the ideas and, and building us? This shit is fucking whack. It's fucking whack that a man will let a woman do all the work. It should be equal or, or he should be doing more, right? But it shouldn't be where he's down all the way down. Now, I could understand if you had like a, a jail record and something is holding you back, right? Or you got a disease, like my son got epilepsy. So he may not be able to go like into the military or take a job as a police officer or something strenuous like that. But if you ain't got nothing holding you back and you a whole grown ass man and you can't even hold down two jobs or get your shit together. Yeah, we got to have fucking problems. But you got time to buy weed. We gonna have problems. One thing about me is I don't do lazy. So <laughs> that really put me into such a funk on top of me. Yeah, y'all getting all the juicy today. That put me in such a funk that I just couldn't snap out of it. So by year three, when I had the last child, um mentally I was gone I was like I was like fuck everybody right so when I finally had left him by year five I left him and moved down south I couldn't take him no more and I discovered me all over again I went back to school I went to become um I went to medical assistant school and I remember I was working at a bar as a as a bartender at night I went to bartending school Got my little certificate and I started working at night because I didn't have anybody to really watch the kids like that. So I became like a single mom and I discovered my strength all over again. And that's when my real life started. So I say that to say all those years I thought having babies was going to bring me happiness and worth. And it didn't. It actually put me in more of a funk. So don't use those reasons as a crutch to discover who you're supposed to be you should have a baby when you're when you're developed mentally and you're ready for like the real world like the real life and a lot of times in your 1920 you're not really ready you know what i'm saying so that's why when these guys be trying to like get up in these young girls it's not good. You should really be having a baby with like a woman in her 30s, not 19 and 20. She she not ready. And that's why these girls be flipping out, throwing the babies in dumpsters. Because mentally, their frontal cortex is not even developed. You're literally still with a baby. Like my daughter's 19 and I still be like, you still a baby. There's some things I need to sit down and really talk to you about, Miss Young Lady. So... <laughs> that's just what it is and um i'm just gonna you know bring some more how you say more content more knowledge more experiences to you guys that will really get you to understand my stance on this this is not me talking anything bad about men this is me really just talking to the women you have to learn yourself first. That's what true womanhood stands for. And I'm out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.